Hey everybody, welcome back. We are all the way to the next to the last video in this series, video 19. Today we're gonna to talk about bankruptcy. We're gonna talk about the idea of what personal bankruptcy is, why it happens, is it a good thing or a bad thing, and uh, we're gonna jump into that a little bit to give you some details, hopefully something you don't actually need to know or navigate on your own, but if you do, then here's the details. So. Um, before we dive in, as always, I needed to go back and I need to jump back one video as, as I always do and say, okay, we had some homework. In that last video, we talked about consumer credit counseling service, debt management agencies, and that kind of thing. And your homework was to research those if that you are considering what your you know, steps are in the process of trying to deal with debt. And as a result of all of those things that we've talked about in the last few videos, as you can see, it's sort of a hodgepodge of topics. Bankruptcy is gonna be no different for us because the goal that I have set for all of us is to succeed in getting out of debt and not have to go down these paths where there's a lot of pitfalls and challenges, but instead just to buckle down, figure it out, fix the behavior, and then work our way through it. And bankruptcy is really no different, but just as I've said with other topics, it's important that you know sort of what these things are. So let's talk a little bit about bankruptcy and, and what it is, how it works, what the different kinds are, and all those kinds of things. Now, I'm not going to go into all the details because it's a really super awfully boring topic if you start to dive into the details of how bankruptcy works and all the different details for your state and all that kind of stuff. Now, in my book, there is some of that, and that's what we're doing. We're going through my book, but I'm trying to give it to you in a video presentation so it's a little less... Uh, scary, it's a little less uh, in depth, and it's a little more digestible to you in, in a brief amount of time. So, bankruptcy is, is billed by those who are proponents of it as a fresh start. And it's, you know, it's one of these things where, man, I'm just under this burden that I'm just so weighed down that I need to start over. And that's sort of what bankruptcy can be. The problem is with bankruptcy of any sort that a lot of times all you're doing is treating the symptom instead of fixing the problem. Same thing with credit counseling, same thing with a debt uh, restructuring of any sort, including a second mortgage or whatever else is, you're giving yourself some breathing room and you know, you're, you're just barely able to get up, oh, I can get some air, I can, bear, oh, I can breathe, and then you go right back under because you get deeper in debt and create more of a problem for yourself. There are some legitimate reasons for bankruptcy and I, I don't want to discount those reasons because the number one cause of personal bankruptcy in America is medical debt. And if somebody comes to me and says, Barry, I've got cancer, I can't afford to get treatment for it, what should I do? Uh, well, if you have the possibility to get treatment for it and it's going to save your life, let's set aside the money issue, let's get treatment. Let's fix those problems, let's do what we need to do and then we'll deal with the financial implications of it. Maybe that means that you have to file bankruptcy because there's millions of dollars that you'll never be able to repay. I can't answer that question for you and I don't I don't look at someone who is considering bankruptcy or who has filed and treat them as a second-class citizen because I don't know their heart but there aren't a lot of legitimate reasons to file bankruptcy sorry about that one of them is medical debt maybe that is a situation that you just literally can't get out a second one maybe that you look at the financial situation that you're in and the math will never ever ever work you've dug a hole so deep that there is no way out. Well, again, I don't know your heart, but I do know that the Bible says only the wicked borrows and does not repay. That's Psalm 37, 21. And I have a hard time saying don't, don't pay back the money you borrow, especially if you've committed to borrowing that money and paying it back. I have a really hard time digesting the idea that, oh, well, I made some bad choices and I'm just going to start over. That works in video games, but that doesn't necessarily work in life we have consequences associated with all of our actions. So I don't want to beat you up too badly over the idea of filing bankruptcy. I do want you to understand that's a very serious, very serious thing to consider. And there are long reaching implications for years and years after you decide to file. Or if you don't, then yeah, you got to deal with the struggle. Yeah, you got to fight it. Yeah, you got to figure it out on your own without the help. So I get it. It is in a very, very, very important decision and one that has to be made in a time where you're probably not mentally and emotionally in the best of places because you're beat down. So with all of that said, 
let me lay out for you the most couple of the couple most common types of, of personal bankruptcy so that you understand that there are different types because some people just think I file and it's over I'm done well let's talk about that kind first that's chapter 7 there are multiple chapters of bankruptcy you hear the one on the news all the time called chapter 11 well that's done for corporations that's company restructuring that is not something that people can file unless that you're a business you don't file chapter 11 you have chapter 7 and 13 as your most common options so chapter 7 is the one that's considered total liquidation in other words you say I'm done I just want you know, it all needs to go away well the way that basically works is you're assigned a trustee you go to court and the judge walks through and figures out what your assets are versus what your debts are and basically liquidates all the assets that can be with a few exceptions depending on your state some states more than others uh, and then basically pays all the debts that can possibly be paid with the assets that can be liquidated and then when that's done your bankruptcy is over well sort of over uh, that's the very 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 simplified explanation of it but basically you're saying I want to wipe out all of my debt I don't want to keep any of it I don't want to claim any of it I want it all to go away whatever has to happen to make it all go away that's what I want to do that's chapter 7 now what happens well that shows up on your credit report for 10 years and you can't file again for eight years after the debt is discharged. So what you basically have done is committed yourself to a decade of promising that you're going to behave financially because what will happen the moment that you file bankruptcy is all these credit card offers, offers will start showing up. All these refinance offers, all these offers to make you want to take on debt again will show up because these lenders know that you can't file bankruptcy again. So what often happens is people don't fix the behavior, they file bankruptcy and go through the process, and then they dig themselves back in the same messy, awful hole. It's not a pretty picture, but it happens all the time. That's chapter seven. It is truly the fresh start. You are starting over, but you've got to fix the behavior. Notice the trend yet in what I'm saying? You've got to fix the behavior. Then there's chapter 13. Chapter 13 is what's often called the wage earners plan. It's where, you know what, I've got more than I can handle, but there are certain things that I really can repay and certain things I cannot. Maybe I do have this massive pile of medical bills that's in the millions of dollars, but I also have a car payment and a house payment and a few other little things that, you know, that I, I want to keep. Well, in that situation, what you do is it's very much like a debt. Uh, it's a, it actually is a court structured debt repayment plan. You go to court, you file chapter 13 and say, I need to repay my debts. Some of them I can't handle some of them I can and the court works out a repayment plan that you must then follow that's all well and good that basically says that your the companies have to adjust your interest rate adjust your minimum payments and oftentimes take a loss but they often prefer that over the chapter 7 because they actually get something instead of nothing it's a toss-up bankruptcy is bankruptcy in the eyes of many lenders because they're not going to get what you promised to pay them now that one has a little different credit implication. It shows up on your credit report, but it shows up a little differently. So it shows up for a number of years. I believe it's seven in that case, uh, but it's after that you complete your repayment plan. And then there's two years thereafter that you cannot file again. So again, you've got long reaching, far reaching implication for a number of years after you file. Again, you have to decide to change your behavior before that's going to work, before it can help you, and before that it will be the fresh start that so many people are really seeking when they look for bankruptcy. So, the, a couple of big caveats before I move on. There are federal bankruptcy laws, and then there are a lot of state-specific bankruptcy laws. Texas, for example, is very different in their bankruptcy proceedings than is Tennessee or Virginia. I, I, I live in Virginia and used to live in Tennessee. I know a lot more about their bankruptcy laws, but when I was looking at a lot of details, you kept seeing these exceptions for Texas, these things that you could do in Texas. Texas is one of these states that's very interesting when it comes to bankruptcy. So whatever state you live in, you can't just take the things that I've just told you and say, okay, I'm done, that's all I need to know. No, you need to research deeper and understand your state laws and the state rules that apply if you're going to file bankruptcy because that is going to take precedence over the basics of what I've just covered. Now, in my book, I give you some details of what that means and some research you can do, but the reality is you can Google filing bankruptcy in whatever state, filing bankruptcy in Tennessee, filing bankruptcy in, you know, or filing chapter seven in New Mexico, take your pick. Uh, that will help you somewhat, but you do have to understand as well that you're not generally going to do this on your own. Now you can file on your own, that's called pro se, but it's probably not really smart. So you're going to have to come up with an attorney, 
meaning you have to pay an attorney's fee, meaning you've got to do some court ordered classes, some stuff that you've got to go through before you can even file. So don't just say like uh, Michael Scott did in the office, I declare bankruptcy. No, that's not how it works. There's a lot more to it than that. So if you decide or think that bankruptcy is the thing for you, do some research, figure it out for your state, and then decide if it's the right thing for you. Now, let's go a little bit further. Let's talk about some alternatives. Now, if you've noticed, I've sort of walked down the path. Let's get our finances in order. If we can't, then what are our options? And then I jumped into CCCS, and then now I'm jumping into bankruptcy. That's really all the way as far as it can go when it comes to finances. In fact, I titled the chapter, I give up filing bankruptcy because that's what you're doing when you file bankruptcy. You're saying my situation is so hopeless that I cannot get there on my own. I must file bankruptcy. I just can't do it any other way. The problem with that approach is I oftentimes don't believe that to be true. Most of the time when we are hopeless, it is because simply we are hopeless. Now that sort of sounds like I'm talking in circles. When we're hopeless, it, sound, it seems like we're hopeless. Well, we are hopeless because we have not seen a solution. We are hopeless because we haven't been given hope. We are hopeless because we don't know how to navigate the mess that we've gotten ourselves into. So what would I propose instead? Well, I've already told you that I believe you should pay your debts. The Bible is very clear on that, and I'm not gonna sit down and tell you, yep, you might as well just start over in very many situations. In fact, I have never given that advice to anyone that I've offered financial counsel to. I've never said, yep, you're bankrupt. Just, just do it and be done. Never. I have told several people that they've got a big mess. I've told several people that it's going to take them years and years and years in some cases to get out of it. I've told several people that it's not going to be easy. I've told several people that they are going to hate me if they keep working with me because it's going to take a lot of work and effort and I'm going to just have to be a stickler for making sure they do it. But guess what? I've never seen a situation personally that I've counseled someone where bankruptcy was their only option. Now, I know that there are those. Again, millions of dollars of medical debt. I get it. It often does come down to you, you'll never pay it. You got to start all over again. I get it. But most of the time, that's not where people are. Most of the time, they are hopeless because they haven't seen the answer. Most of the time, they're hopeless because they haven't been given hope. So let me give you a little hope. First off, if you will cure the problem, then the symptoms become so much less. What do I mean by that? If you're looking at your situation and you don't know even how you got so far down the hole, well, figure that out first. You need to sit down and figure out whether that's reading books, whether that's watching videos like this, whether it's taking classes, whether that's going to somebody who has succeeded financially and asking for their help, whatever that means reasonably, it means to go and figure out what the problem really is with your financial situation before you start taking action. If you don't know what the problem is, how can you fix it? If you don't know the target you're aiming at other than I need to fix my financial mess, how can you fix it? So figure out first what really is the problem. Is it overspending? Is it poor management in general? Is it that you do have a math problem, meaning you're not earning enough and your expenses are too high? Is it that you're being taken advantage of financially and you need to cut the cord with some family members or friends who are always taking money from you? There's a lot of reasons you could be having financial trouble. What are those reasons? Then address those. It's like medicine here, okay? Take the medicine that you know is going to fix the problem, not the one that's going to make you feel oblivious. A lot of times people say, I just don't want to feel any pain. No, feel the pain, work through the pain, and you'll be so much better off. Just like I was talking about with credit counseling in my last video, the people who feel like they want the easy out and press that easy button often go right back into the mess. They often go right back into the struggle because they didn't fix the problem. They didn't cure what really was ailing them. They just masked the symptoms for a while. So I've preached that sermon enough, I believe, but get my point. Cure the problem. Don't just treat the symptoms. Second, don't wait until you don't find another answer. Don't wait until you think it's hopeless. Don't be hopeless. Find out why you still have a few options, while there's still a little breathing room, while the water may be up to here, but it's not quite over your nose and you can't breathe yet. Start asking for help. Start looking for a way out and take the way that, way, that actually makes sense for you. But again, 
Don't be taking the financial advice from somebody who doesn't know. Seek out somebody who is competent, who is capable, and who wants to help you. Ask the people who have succeeded with money to help you, not the person who's broke, okay? The other thing that's really, really, really important here, okay? Listen to me, is to understand that it took you time to get in this mess, it will take you time to get out. It's just like the discussion of losing weight. It's really easy to gain weight for a lot of people. They just eat, that's easy. But when you're spending that same amount of time or more on the treadmill, or saying no to the dessert and having the salad, or doing whatever is necessary to lose the weight, that's a lot harder because discipline is required, okay? You can't just assume that, oh, well, I got in bankrupt. I got in the situation of, of where I'm near bankruptcy in a, in a week. I'll get out in a week. No, you can sign a loan agreement for a million dollar house, and uh, you can do that in a matter of minutes. And guess what? It will take you decades potentially to get out of that because you've got to pay payment after payment after payment after payment. So understand that it's going to take time. So be patient with yourself. All right. So cure the problem. Don't wait until it's too late and understand and be understanding with yourself that it's going to take time. So with all of that in mind, are you bankrupt? Chances are the answer is no. Are you in a situation that you need help with? Possibly the answer is yes, seek out help. You spend all this money on stuff that is a waste. You spend all this money on stuff that's just fun for a short amount of time. Spend some money on a counselor. Spend some money on a financial coach. Spend some money on buying the resources that will teach you what you need to know to take care of your financial situation. Think about that. It's money well invested, okay? It's time well invested. It's energy and emotional energy well invested. So bankruptcy, it's not really complicated. You just basically say, I don't know what to do. I'm stuck. I, I need a fresh start. And you go fire, find an attorney. You pay him a thousand bucks or so. You take a class or two. You go to the courthouse and say, I'm done. Now, I'm very much oversimplifying it, but that's, that's pretty much the gist of it. It doesn't get more complicated than that unless you allow it to be. I mean, there's a lot of stuff and nuance, but really, that's what it boils down to. But do you need to go there? Most of the time, 99% of the time, the answer is no. So cure the problem. Don't wait till it's too late. And be patient with yourself. Understand that it's going to take you some time. So I do have a little homework because there's one last aspect of this that I, I, I decided not to talk much about, but I am going to th throw it in at the end because I want it to be something you think about. A lot of people have a really uh, heavy moral sense about bankruptcy. They believe that it's evil. Or they believe that it's their right as an American. That, doggone it, if I want to file bankruptcy, I can. I'm allowed. Okay, I have an opinion on bankruptcy, and you do as well. Is bankruptcy evil? Is bankruptcy a fresh start? Is it a good option, or is it a bad choice? What is bankruptcy, and why? The reason I want you to think about that is not necessarily because you might have to file or you may be going through that decision process, but especially as you're learning, because if you're this far, if you're 19 videos in with me and you're really paying attention to what we're talking about here, then chances are really good that you're serious about changing your financial situation. You're trying to do better. And if that's the case, then chances are good that you're going to be equipped to help someone else. And if you're equipped to help them and they you come along and they say, you know what, I just give up. I'm just going to forget it. I'm done. You need to be ready to handle or help them handle emotionally what that means and walk down the path of, okay, if you give up, here's what happens. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Is it fair or unfair? Is it a fresh start? Is it an evil activity? What is it? So I want you to give that a little bit of thought because especially as we're finishing out, we've only got one video left and we'll be done. As we're finishing this whole series out, I want you to understand that this is all about emotion and behavior when it comes to trying to figure out what's right for you. Now, there are right and there are wrong. And you have to remove emotion when you decide, hey, this is the action I'm gonna take. You have to stick with it. But a lot of these kinds of things, like dealing with debt management or taking out a second mortgage or filing bankruptcy, that's so much emotion driven when it shouldn't always be. So give that a little thought and be prepared to answer for yourself. Be prepared to answer and help somebody else who may be struggling. That's all I've got for you today. We will have one more video. One more video where I'm going to wrap it all up and uh, give you a charge to take with you. And hopefully you will have changed your financial future if you've watched all these videos and you'll be on the path to do it the right way. I encourage you to think about 
the goods and the bads of your finances. Work through them and let's go from debtor to better. Take care. Talk to you next time.